This is the Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Let's go nuts! It's Jimmy Nuts! Five out of the door! With your host, Mark Martinez. Because I'm the Mark and I'm awesome! The Guru. Today I'm going to break it down for all you simpleton sweat hogs listening out there in Can Crusher Nation. I don't mean to come out here week after week and toot my own horn, but toot, toot. And the English Professor. It is I, the English Professor from the County of Kings, speaking the English of the Queen. Hey, this is former WWE superstar Duke, the Dumpster Drossy, and you are listening to the Can Crushers Podcast. And welcome back to another Can Crushers Weekly episode. I am your host, and I am in Casa de Padalano, because I'm at the English professor's house this weekend. So there's no in-studio. And Chad, you're on your couch. So welcome to the show, gentlemen. Yeah, we mixed things up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is good to be here, my brothers. Good good night in wrestling. <clears throat> Decent week. Great night on. in wrestling last night. Yeah. Last night was really good. It's an early morning after a late night, but uh that's all right. We got coffee and coffee, uh some fruits, yeah, some muffins. Yep. We we had all the servants here. Already waiting on us. I I feel privileged. Like I'm. I See, might it's move. great when you do the show here. You, people bring you stuff. Yeah, I I might not do another show in studio, Chad. You might drive all the way to Pittsburgh just to have breakfast and then go all the way right back home. Yeah. That makes sense, right? Yeah. Mark Mark would do that because it's it's easy for him to just drive and be waited on and then drive back. And in, in his eye, five hours for an hour and a half. Two hours, we're good. We're, yeah. But it's the food, it really is, that John makes his own water. I don't know if you know that. It's I, unbelievable. It's a secret recipe of ice and water filtered a certain way. Um, it, it's really good. It's really good. So I, is this like a like the, what's that, uh, <laughs> pork and beans commercial where the, the dog knows the recipe, but... Right. He ain't allowed to talk, so your cat knows the recipe, so that's yeah. why you put it in the wall. Or in the attic. In the attic? Yeah, yeah. I thought we were going to say Mark's the dog who's not allowed to tell the recipe. I did, too. Yeah, I thought that's where we were going. That makes sense. But. Yeah. So, other than wrestling last night and wrestling for the week, how is Yins's weekend? See, I don't have to do that. I'm Pittsburgh You're in now. Pittsburgh now, yeah. How was Yinz's weekend? Week in general. It was a good weekend. You have weekend. big news. You have big news. Stop pussyfooting around this. Oh, uh, I I got lucky. Um, I was informed last night when oh. I was at the event that uh, I got drawn for a once in a lifetime uh, moose tag for hunting in Maine. Um, my buddy, who I go up there and go bear hunting with. Uh, gave me a call and let me know and uh you know I'll give a I'll give a shout out to him at a uh later time but uh this is this is kind of one of these bucket list items for me um never you know it's kind of like it is basically winning the lottery um well, it's called the moose was, lottery yeah yeah there was 3000 tags and 78000 applicants holy cow that's pretty amazing. Um, and on top of that, the tag that I got is in one of the most, if not the most sought after zone for trophy animals. So when you get a moose, um, I expect meat, John expects meat, but are you going to keep the whole thing and get it stuffed and put that in your attic or on your front porch or something? Or what are you, you going to keep out of it? It's a trophy. Not, not the whole, not the whole thing. But if uh, if I'm lucky enough to harvest one, and I want to, you know, count my eggs before they hatch, so to speak. But uh, 
I'll probably the antlers, maybe a uh, shoulder mount. Okay. Um, just gonna have to figure that out because that's a the the antlers themselves on something like that are probably close to two hundred pounds. What would um, you get mounted, John? So, what would I get mounted? I I don't know. I've this isn't going to surprise our listeners. I've never hunted a day in my life. My brothers, my dad, they, you know, went shooting at the ranges. They hunted. They fished. I was none of those things. I don't know what I would get mounted. I have no idea. My uh, autographed Roddy Piper t-shirt, I'd mount that on my wall. I, I was meaning off, off of that animal. Like, he's saying his, the horns right. or his shoulder mount. I have no idea what I would mount. I, off of an animal. Anything. Anything. I don't know that I would ever want to mount. I mean, I don't want to look at it. I think I think I have all the respect in the world for people that that hunt, but I could not mount an animal in my house and look at it every day. Like not even a leg. No. Oh no. All right. That's Sorry. what I was getting to. What if John? Do you have a doorbell? I do. You know, I could. I could. Oh, this get is the, going down a bad path. I could get the butt mounted. I've seen the mounts of deer. Where they get the butts mounted and yet to poke it in the butt to ring the doorbell. Oh, I can do that. That you. would be fun. And it's not inside then. Yeah. It's outside. So you yeah. don't have to look at it. I think it's not inside the Oh, it's inside that. Inside the butt, yeah. The crevice. Yeah, you gotta stick the finger in the butt to ring the doorbell. So this is where we've gone. Uh so <laughs> to get selected, did you have to present like um a resume of hunting experience? Like I once bit a rabbit its neck and killed it, or I rode a deer with covering its eyes and ran it into a tree, and that's how it died. Like, did you have to impress them with your hunting experience? It, you have to have, you have to have a hunting course. Um, you know, yeah, I, I don't want to say you have to provide experience, but you have to be a licensed hunter, which means you had to have gone through, you know, X hours of courses and, your state or Maine or anything or something like that. Um, and up there, the best thing to do is to hire a guide that knows the area. Um, this happens to be my, my buddy has the business, a guiding business. And he's like, this is the first time I'll get a chance at this. He said, like I said, I'm, I'm paying a fifth of what everybody else would charge. And this, you know, you're talking, a 1200 up to a 1200 1300 pound animal and he's just like yeah we'll just we get one we'll get it out of the woods some fucking way wow do you think Hulk Hogan go ahead sorry four by fours uh you know whatever else it'll be uh you know three four five person thing if if an animal is harvested and what's really great about it is, is the hunters up there really stick together. You know, there'll be strangers that'll help you out and help you get the animal That's out nice. and stuff like that. Good. Because I hope you weren't going to call us yeah. to come and help you. Oh, now I wouldn't do as funny as that would be. I, w- I would like to see John <laughs> try to pick up a moose leg or, you know, the Mark, tail. tell Mark to ho- tell Mark to you know walk behind it and hold its head. I don't know. That might that might be worth the amusement factor to pay you guys to come up. You couldn't pay me enough. D- do you think Hulk Hogan <laughs> could body slam that moose? Because Andre the Giant was about a thousand pounds, I think, at WrestleMania three. This is moose is about thirteen hundred. Yeah, I said. think Lex Luger could. You think Luger could? Yeah, probably. Yeah, I think Luger could hip toss him like he did Yoko Zuna. Yeah. 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 But I would think Braun Strowman could lift up every moose up there because you've seen him move buses yeah. with fingers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a crane. Hey, hey, that's an idea. Maybe I should hire Braun Strowman, pay his <laughs> six figure salary. Fee, you know, his appearance fee. <laughs> just have him up on his shoulders, you know, torture rack style and carry it out. Piggyback it out of the woods. That's worth that it. Might be- that might be a fucking idea. The hell with my guide. I'll just have Braun Strowman pick the fucker up and take him to the truck. Uh, I probably know two others 
that we saw last night, and we won't spoil it, that would probably do some work too. Um, a little bit older, but I, it fits the bill. They, they would come up, and we'll get to that on, on IWC recap. And that's where we're going to spend most of our time on this show. But, John, what would you do this week? Yeah, it was a busy week also. I had some baseball games with the little kids. Um, baseball. Oh, yeah. I yeah. got that, too. I, I'm reaching <laughs> these kids. I'll say that. I know I've gone from they're crazy, they're animals, to they're, ah, okay, they're coming around, to reaching them. Uh, I had a little powwow before the game, and there's one kid. He is just, he is more bananas than this banana muffin I have in front of me. And I was like, hey, listen, I won't say his name. I said, but come on, you know, it's been long enough that when coach calls for a meeting, you have to sit and listen. And then after the game, I wanted to talk to them again. And still, absolutely bananas, this kid. And one of his teammates tapped him on the shoulder, got his attention, put his finger to his lips as if to say shush, and pointed to me. I was like, holy cow. That, that... Yeah, do I want to say it was worth the whole season? I'm reaching them. I'll say that. It's which a is, win. It's a win. It's absolutely a win. If you touch one child yes. during the game, yes. during the season, you, you've uh, yeah. progressed. Yes, we have progressed. They are, um, they're better today than they were on day one. So I'll take it. And that's your week. You know, yeah, it, it was mostly, yeah, it was mostly that. We gotta, we gotta bring it up because I know. <sighs> I know the punching bag there, you know, the bean bag toss. <laughs> um, Mark, let's let's hear about you. I, I hear that you and I have something in common. Target practice. I literally was. I literally was. Um, and I won't say, of course, you know, I, I umpire in Ridgeway. So, you know, it was a Ridgeway team against another team. And I won't bring it up. But Chad had the... <sighs> You have a cat on your porch, by the way, and it's not yours. No, my cat's going to flip out if she sees that cat. That's Benny. He's a neighborhood cat, and they <laughs> fight. Holy cow. So I, I was called umpire game, and of course I, I will umpire any game. I, I do. I love it. So we're moving right along. Ridgeway destroys this other team. And it's so early that the other coach is like, hey, you know, you've definitely 10 run ruled us. You've. 15 run, you, you any run rule do you want us to say? Do you care if you let the kids play? So they asked me, and I'm like, ah, I don't care. So they put, yeah, let the kids play. Yeah, let the kids play. I should have said no. Right then and there, I knew something was up. They changed your pitcher because your pitcher had too many pitches, so they put this kid in that isn't hitting the strike zone. All right, I can work with that, just watching him. The downfall is the catcher um, comes out with, an infielder's glove, and decides he's not going to use the glove. And he's back behind the plate calling the game like he's Pudge Rodriguez or Gary Carter, inside, outside, because you see him doing stuff with his hands. So I'm like, shit, this catcher might be pretty good. No, he doesn't move the glove. <laughs> and 45 minutes later in the top of the inning, I... Uh, have been hit six times. Damn. Because when he does go for it, he moves his hand a little bit, so it just tips it into me. And I'm 44. I don't have the reflexes of that cat on your porch. Bam! Into my shoulder. Bam! Into my face. Now, some of the kids did foul back, and uh, that happens all the time. If they foul back into the face, I, I have the protection on. Um, so that's good on the batter. But holy moly, this catcher, and he didn't he didn't want to catch anything. Get up off his knees, go back, get the ball, oh, throw it. Take he was a he was a ten year old rain delay. <laughs> Is what they wanted to happen. <laughs> and Chad got the phone call. He called me not knowing I was in a game. Chad, honestly, I was flipping out when you called me. Wasn't I? I was like, this mf -er just couldn't catch it. I, didn't, I meant it now, and I still do. Didn't uh, so catch what, anything. So what you're saying is, is this kid couldn't catch crabs from a $10 hooker. I, yeah. <laughs> Bad shoulder each time. Bam, 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 bam. And my buddy, the Ridgeway coach, is just laughing. 
He knows I'm pissed off. So when Ridgeway comes to bat, he tells his kids, dude, swing the bat and get out of here because Mark is livid. <laughs> three up, three down. We wrapped that some bitch up and we went home. What was the final? Like 25 to Nothing. 15 or something? No, there was no score. Oh, oh wow. They wow. didn't score. Wow. And uh, I guess I, you said, yeah, there was a big deficit, yeah. And I did something I shouldn't have, and I, I now thinking about it, normally after the game, I go over and shake the opposing coach's hand. I was just pissed. I just took my gear off and went home. <laughs> so, yeah, that was my week. Um, Chad, you wanted to rip on John about something else, too, though, didn't you? About, uh, what was it? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of out of place now, but, you know, I'm on the way home last night and get a text, 8 o'clock. Oh, no, not we that. Will... No, oh, it was, no it, not it, that. No, that was because we'll throw Soup under the bus. Soup was going to join us today, which was awesome, because he's our IWC correspondent, we'd like to have him on the show, he decided to stay up and watch the UFC fights, have a couple extra beverages, went to bed at 4 o'clock, woke back up at 6 to let the dog out, I get a text saying, my dumbass stayed up till 4, I'm going back to bed. So he missed out on the servants feeding us, Yeah. so <laughs> that's his fault. That's on him, yeah. But the other thing was, uh, with technology, it was early in the week. I forget what you didn't do, that you had to have somebody... Oh, your uh, computer screen. You guys don't remember. Your uh, screensaver on your computer that you Sylvan did three years ago that you don't know how to Oh, change. on my phone. Yeah, no, no, yeah. Well, look who doesn't know what it, the difference between a computer and a phone. Oh, please. No, yeah, he did my... Uh, yeah, he put Razor Ramon as my, um, is it my screen... No, it's my background. And he put the Yankee symbol as my... I would not know how to change this right now if I had to. I don't want to. I love the Yankees. I love Razor Ramon, so that's absolutely fine. But I wouldn't know how to change this if I had to. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. All right. and, and he did this for me when he was really little. You really don't know how to... I don't. No, I have no idea. I would not know the first thing to do. There's something Maybe going to I settings would... or something? Yeah. Yeah. I figured out from there, but... Yeah. Yeah. So, we'll have a little bit of a surprise here in a little bit. But, uh, all right, let's dive into the week in wrestling. All right, that's it. Coming up next. Uh, we get two Hell in a Cell matches that are announced between Raw and SmackDown, right? Uh, Essentially. Yeah. SmackDown's the one I'm actually kind of looking forward to between Roman Reigns and Rey Mysterio. But beyond that, there was a good women's match, right? Liv Morgan and Carmella. We're going to start with SmackDown first? Yeah, why not? It was a better show. That I, I can't think of a single thing that... Not that it was even a good show. Was it a better show? <sighs> because we had an hour of the family. Oh, talk. yeah, at least. We, yeah. Had, we had Days of Our Lives with Roman, Jimmy, Jay, and Oh, and my Paul. God. We get it. Now we're going to go see Roman cry. Now we're going to go watch him laugh. Now we're going to go watch him... Ugh. We get it. it. Just And matches were rushed... I thought Liv Morgan and Carmella was a very good match. I like what they're doing with Carmella. I think she's got a great personality. She constantly reinvents that Carmella character. Uh, but again, stays true to, to, to what, you know, that character is. Um, but they rush that match. Liv Morgan's talented. They rush everything just so they can get back to Roman Reigns having a 10 minute discussion with his cousins. Yeah. Chad, do you have anything on SmackDown? Um I, I like the Roman Reigns thing, but it's it's starting to wear on me. Um like I said, he he looks he looks like he's having a lot of fun being such a prick, but it's like okay. We fucking get it. Yeah. Just have him come out. Just have him come out and you know, fucking butler tuxes and serve you and stand there and wipe your mouth and shit like that. Okay, we get it. Um, the funniest thing off of SmackDown, did y'all catch Bailey's segment and what happened? That's where I was going. I love Ding Dong Hello. Yeah, with Seth Rollins? Not for the segment, 
but did you see what was flashed on the screen? Yep. Uh, WWE champion Brock Lesnar. Yeah. For about wonder how many people are going three to be seconds relieved of their duties <sighs> after that shit. I miss everything. You guys know I miss all the subtle stuff. I completely miss that. It was popped up just as Bailey got in and was making the the announcement of who was going to be on Ding Dong Hello, and it said right underneath Bailey, WWE Champion Brock Lesnar. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. Somebody doesn't have a job as of Saturday morning. Yeah. Uh but I like the segment too. Her and Seth are really funny together. Yeah. And then Seth took an ass beating by Cesaro. Yeah, yeah. That that was all I had from SmackDown. Um, um, side note, side well, note, we went to IWC last night, and we were hoping maybe to see one of our buddies, Ray Lynn, pop up on the reset button. But as we got back to Casa de Padlano, um, I'm going through Twitter and everything. I see on Sam Adonis, Corey Graves' Twitter that – their uncle got married last night, and you see Carmella and Ray Lynn and one of their cousins doing the chicken dance. So oh, wow. It was really cool, um, the behind-the-scenes things that they're dancing with one of their, like, handicapped cousins or something to do the, do the chicken dance. Oh, so that's nice. Carmella and Ray Lynn look like they're besties. So maybe that helps Ray Lynn, which I would love to this day because she's a sweetheart. All right, uh, Raw. Yeah, we get uh, a hell in a cell between Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre. They announce when, obviously, the next big pay-per-view, but when is it? It hell in a cell. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Like next weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're not just going to have it this coming Thursday. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're not going to have it, you know, for no reason. Yeah. Um, Chad brings up he, his favorite move of the week. Was from one of your favorite wrestlers, Humberto Carrillo, Chad. <laughs> yeah, old uh, Humberto Carrillo, and uh, and your, one of your favorite wrestlers, Mark Ricochet. Yeah. Um, you no, know, they had their five thousandth match with um, Sheamus, the Trash Panda U.S. Champion. You know, he's got that Trash Panda mask on, which is a shout out to a minor league baseball team. You know that, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, but they did a Spanish fly off of the ring apron straight to the floor, and it looked brutal. I mean, there was no hitting on your, you know, legs a little bit and then your ass. No, this was a flat back just as if they would do it perfect in the ring. I honestly thought one of them was injured again. It, we really don't know if one is or isn't yet. Uh, nothing has come out of this that they've said that I've read. Yeah, it. Holy shit! What that was, and you know, they're none of us really. You know, they're 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 good wrestlers. They're okay. We have our issues with them. That was a fuck of a move for anybody to take. I don't care what size you are. Yeah. Uh, what I got out of this is the Alexa Shayna Baszler thing. Clearly, they're going to have a match. Clearly, this is going to be Alexa's match back or whatever. But my question to you guys is: Do we get to see the whole Shayna as a vampire again at some point? Does she get converted over and be with Alexa? <sighs> Man, I hope not. That was dumb the first time around. I, I hope not. I, I think she and Nia are kind of yeah. uh, going to part ways soon. They, they've had a great run by today's standards, the longevity they had. Um, you know, it's the stuff of legends. So maybe she does need something else. She does not need to bite people's necks again. No. And be painted ghastly white. No. Is this going to be like a Twilight thing with them? Like vampires versus werewolves shit? I'm... I'm thinking they're, they're trying something. I, I mean, I don't know. The downfall is I, I like Alexa being this the way that she is, but there's only so much you can do with her because Bray was a human that could do stuff as the fiend. What's this pup? This puppet is inanimate. Yeah. Good word. 
Thank you. You're welcome. That was in my notes to so make sure I said inanimate. Yeah. The whole okay. week. Hey, if if Ethan Page and Impact can have a Mortal Kombat match and get his heart ripped out, <laughs> right? This fucking this fucking puppet can wrestle a five star match for even Dave Meltzer. Wow. Those are big words. So that's uh, your two main brands for WWE. Yeah, they they were not great. Uh, let's do AEW, and then we'll do NXT and slide over. Because AEW, I'm sure we can get through pretty quick, too. Um, I'm, this is the first week that I say that I really could... There was nothing on it that grabbed my attention. Um this back to back thing wore me out. I'll be honest. Like, you know, SmackDown from 8 to 10 and then AEW from 10 to midnight. I dozed in and out. That's why you get a DVR. Well, I do have a VCR, but you can't record <laughs> stuff off the TV anymore. And with that technology being obsolete and with no new way to record anything, it's like the old days where you, you can't. Uh, how about you set up your phone from, see, just keep your TV on from 10 to midnight. Yeah. And record with your phone just facing the, the TV. And then in the morning, you can wake up and just like skim through stuff on your phone on yeah. the video. Get like, now, now come on, Mark. Cheryl would have reality, to do it for him. Cheryl. You gotta say it the right way. Have Sylvan <laughs> or it, tell the, have John tell them what he wants. Have the, then have the peasants set it up for him. him. Right. Yeah, you, you mispronounced have Sylvan do it for you. I did. I did. But AEW, um, I don't, I don't really know. Again, I like that Archer is back to just crushing people. I don't know who the hell Chandler Hopkins is. Will it be around again? I don't know. Um, the main event was lackluster. We do see Brian Cage chasing down Ricky Stark, so hopefully I'm there where I want this break to happen now. But I think it's going to linger a little bit longer until Starks is cleared to wrestle. Yeah, but he, um, he could go through Hobbs and Hook and then get Starks as a big payoff, but yeah. The, the one... The only thing I got out of AEW, you know, every, everything you said, agree with. Um, Arn Anderson's son making his debut next week. When that guy walked out, I was like, man, there is no fucking way in hell that that is anybody's kid but Arn's. He looks like, you know, a 21-year-old, however old the kid is. He looks exactly like his dad. Yeah. Yeah. Are you excited to see I'm, what he does next week? I'm kind of, yeah, I'd, I'd kind of like to see, uh, you know, that the, the spine buster is going to be in, in play at some point. Um, the kid looks, you know, the, the, the after angle where he, uh, tackled old, uh, Q-tip Marshall and was beaten on him. Um, he the kid just looks like he's ready to fucking explode to me and you know we we say a lot of you know there's a lot of second generation guys that uh don't quite deliver what their dad does i'm not saying that he's going to be like arn but if anybody is ever going to have the training necessary it's going to be this kid Straight up from his dad. Yeah. Um, I just want to mention uh, Angelico's match against Christian Cage. I can't stand that guy. Angelico, I hate him as a tag team. I hate him in singles. We are... A human being? You hate him. No, I don't know him as a human being. I don't know him as a human being. I definitely hate him in the ring. Um, we have kind of been moving away from... Not we, but the world of professional wrestling is moving away from a lot of the unnecessary flips and, you know, five or six things just to grab a wrist lock. Uh, this guy is keeping that going, man. He is willing to die on that hill. Um, I cannot stand his style. I just can't. And I think when Christian Cage took over the action, you still see how good he is 
just very lean. You know what I mean? There's no excess. Gets to the freaking point. Um, I just, I cannot watch an Angelico match. I'm sorry. I, I hope he's making a ton of money and has a great career. I can't stand to watch the guy. To continue the poo-pooing, um, Brandon Cutler with the Bucks now. Um, do you remember him three months ago? He came out with this Triple H mask on. He had the hugest pop of somebody that is going to get just destroyed. Now that he's a young boy, he doesn't he doesn't remember how to wrestle. He doesn't know. Like we remember three months ago, Brandon Brandon Cutler. Yeah. Now he can't wrestle. He doesn't yeah. know anything. Since he put that tracksuit on. We're really shitting on everything. But don't worry. Second segment, we bring the fire because we're excited. AEW. Let, a, go ahead. Let me let me throw a compliment out there. And I want to make sure you guys are sitting down, not don't have uh, anything in your mouth, food or drink. Um I I have to say John has said this before. I don't like the fucking guys. But the Young Bucks is heels. This is where they need to fucking be. I can't remember the last time I rooted for somebody just to get the ever-loving shit beat out of them. It's like each week, I don't care who does it. I really don't. I would root for fucking Luchasaurus, or not Luchasaurus, uh, the, the Marco Stunt. Idiot. X, I would oh, oh I tell her. Oh, Mark. Marco Stunt would be tough, but I would mm, just that they're bastards and this fits them. Don't try to be light. Don't try to be cute. You're fucking bastards. Act like that. They are. That's AEW. Yeah. Yeah. Rolling right along. All right. NXT, um, probably the best show of the week. On Definitely. TV. Yeah. So, John, go ahead. Right. Um. What did I want to point out? You, uh, Poppy was there. Yeah, Poppy David was Ortiz. there. She released her album. Oh, I thought that Poppy, David Ortiz. Oh, if he was, that's I didn't see him. Oh, that's why. I. She must have been little Poppy. All eighty-five pounds of her. Um. I just. Why do we give a shit? I just don't understand why we give a shit. Why do you do this to your wrestling fans? You're not going to get the crossover fans. No Poppy fan is going to be, oh, wow, I need to watch NXT now. Oh. Uh, you didn't download the album at... I, no, I didn't. At 8.13 or whenever she released it? No, no, I didn't do you even do have Spotify? Do you know what that is? Yeah, it's Spotify. I could show you on my phone I have Spotify. No, I, I did not download the Poppy album. Sorry. Uh... Maybe I'll have one of the kids tell me about it. Um, an album? Yeah, it's not even an album. Is it? Really. I don't know what. It, how many songs are on it? I don't know. Uh, I didn't look. Oh, uh, okay. I'm just picking on the album thing. I, I mean, next is it going to be vinyl or vinyls? Actually, track vinyls back. Ethan buys vinyls, which is, is unbelievable. Uh, I mean, vinyls when we were going listening to them were five ninety nine, and I know back then. Now they're like Ethan has to save. A whole freaking check to buy one. Wow! But he loves he loves the the sound of vinyl. He's he sometimes he's an old soul. Yeah. Sometimes I don't know. I don't know. Um, Killian Dane versus Isaiah Swerve Scott. I want to bring up this match because um, I'm a fan of Isaiah Swerve Scott. I, I can't get into Killian Dane. Um, he tried to wrestle a fast match. He's kind of a big guy. Um, and not to say some big guys can't move, but, you know, he ain't Bam Bam Bigelow. No. Don't don't work that style of match. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just, just go for tried and true. Beat the crap out of this guy. Let him work the fast stuff. You do the power stuff. But... You could see Swerve, which, you know, his name says it all about him, trying to slow himself down so Dane can keep up with him. When in reality, you would say, well, why is he slowing down? He should speed up so this, you know, big fat guy is going to try to chase him with his tongue hanging out of his mouth. 
it just it wasn't believable to me. Don't wrestle that style of match. I would have rather have seen Killian Dane versus Suge Knight or whoever that guy is outside the ring from Hit Row. Shyamalan? I don't know his name, but he looks like Suge Knight. Oh. Bless you. <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> You guys know what I mean? The big guy from him. He was in the NFL, they said. I, yeah. I'd never heard of him. Where did he play, Mark? You know I everything. No, I don't, I you don't, don't know. know who this guy is. He was probably in the NFL, like George Wells and Jim the Anvil Neidhart were in the NFL. On the practice squad. I think they watched an NFL game. So you were but in the NFL. You went to the draft, at least. I did, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> I, I have to... Quickly, I don't. God, Go what ahead. kind of man throws his mom under the bus? But you. I, yeah, me. Yeah, I remember. You know, my mom. My mom. <laughs> I do a good impression of my mom. That was a good impression of my mom. Uh, when I told her we were going to the draft, and she she doesn't know a whole lot about American sports or pop culture or anything like that. And she said, "So what is it they do?" I said, "Well, they they you know they pick names and the teams. They decide who's going to play for them." And then she asked, "So." Wait, you and Sylvan get to pick the names? I was like, yeah, are you kidding me? Sylvan and I are like, we're going to stack the Steelers and the Jets, and it's probably going to be the AFC Championship game, Ma. I was like, no, Ma, we we don't. We go to watch the names picked, and there are a lot of activities, but... Please give me an impression of your mom. Of um, saying something about this. Well, last night, uh, yeah, uh, like 4 o'clock or so, you arrived at my house. And there's a point to this because we'll 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 get into the impression here in a second. Um, and true as always, when you come to my house, Mark, how was I dressed? Naked. I was in my shorts, boxers. Yeah, I had uh, I'd gotten up and gone to the gym, came home, showered, got changed, had to get my daughter to a graduation party, which is like at you know near the ballpark near the pool where my son plays his baseball games. And he's like, well, we're here. Do you want to hit? And we, yeah, okay. We'll hit. For Nobody was there. We had the whole park to ourselves. And it was hot. So I was drenched again. I was like, hey, Uncle Mark's going to be over any minute. Let's go home. So I went home, showered again. And I just, you know, he, my son and I were both still sweating. Because we spent a good hour and a half, two hours out in the sun hitting baseballs. And Mark texts me, I'm here. And I said, uh, hey, buddy, will you get the door? I can't get the door right now. And Uncle Mark comes in, and I'm in the kitchen because we cooked out. I'm in the kitchen uh, you know, in my underwear, chopping chicken. You know, I complain about Italian stereotypes in the media. Right. But then Mark comes over, and I'm in the kitchen in my underwear, chopping chicken. So who do I have to blame? Nobody but myself. Um, but we cooked out. You know Go ahead, Chad. Go ahead. I'm so glad you said chopping chicken. Right. I was uh, waiting for this. Oh, my God. Or something else. Ay, ay, ay. Sorry. That's I, right. I, it was there, and I'm like, I'm like looking at my phone, scanning something, listening to you, and I was like, what? Chopping chicken? Oh, okay, chopping chicken. Okay, we're good. So I asked Mark, like, hey, do you want another hot dog? Do you want another piece of chicken? And he's like, no, really, I'm good. We have to go. So then I hit him with, uh, all right, let me see here. Uh, Maron, Mark, man, you, you know it nothing. Come on. I make a two piece. I cut a half. I give you, I take the other half. And he can't resist because in his mind, it's such a good impression that he can't say no to my mom. So, yeah, yeah. How was that? Was that pretty That good? was great. Yeah. Thanks. All right. You were more into it yesterday, especially yeah. when you did it to AJ. Yeah. She just looked at you and rolled your eyes. She's like, oh, I thought Grandma was here. Uh, NXT, anybody else? Anybody else? I'm looking forward to the pay-per-view tonight, but we'll get to that. Um, third segment. Yeah, third segment. We'll make our predictions. Um, it's only like, a, literally. Four uh, matches. Yeah, I was going to say a handful of matches, but yeah. Okay. I've I've got a bet. There was something I forgot on SmackDown. I got to circle back, unfortunately, to bring up because I want to give you guys both a laugh. Oh boy! What in the fuck is Otis's new look? Uh, he's he's from Pee he Wee Herman's Big Adventure. He looks. 
when I when I saw the picture real quick, <laughs> he looks like a. And I, I'm I'm sorry to. Oh just God! Here right we off go. the morning, get mean like this. He looks like a shaved nether region of a male. <laughs> I mean, it's like a fucking a, 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 a elephant with its fucking trunk cut off, <laughs> crossed between that and a shaved nether region. I'm like, uh. it is bad when you're on screen lover texts within minutes and says or twitters within minutes and says what in the fuck did you do yeah <laughs> john john did you see that? i did yeah i did yep what yeah. the fuck I said Pee Wee Herman's Big Adventure guy that stole a bike, or uh, <laughs> um, the guy that wanted to beat up Marty McFly in oh, Back to the Future. Yeah, yeah. Biff? Yeah, Biff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who told him to do this? I mean, I've never been a Noah uh. fan at all, but in the ponytail that he has coming in, looking pretty good, too. It looks great. Poor guy, I think they man. They probably fucking forgot that part of hair on the back of his head. I think they forgot to release him. Is what they forgot. <laughs> uh, one other quick thing: Ember Moon and uh, Dakota Kai was a really good match. Again, they continue to maybe tease uh, Dakota and Raquel splitting, but not really because now they're working well together. Um, Ember gets a DQ victory because of outside interference, but. Um. Dakota Kai is awesome. She really is. Yeah, she is. Uh, we'll see tonight what happens on the pay-per-view. But, uh, guys, we are officially a week away from Ballpark Brawl. Um, less than a week away when you're listening to this. Uh, Dubois, Pennsylvania. Uh, you see all the posts on the Facebook where you can get tickets. Tickets are going fast. Um, that This is really not like a shoot to make you buy a ticket. No, they legit, uh, I know the numbers are looking great right now, so they're going fast. So if you're interested, make sure you get there. Um, find one of the posts. The, the way to order it's on, on all the posts that I put up. Um, matches are being announced. You see that as well. We'll be there this coming Saturday. Um, Looks like it's going to be a great show. I'm excited for it. And if you're in Dubois Friday and Sunday as well, there's going to be some great baseball action that I get the call. So I'm excited about a one three-day weekend for me at work, doing things that I love, being involved in baseball and wrestling. So, yeah. Well, um, <clears throat> this is the Al Snow Head Memorial no, Cup, right? this is legit called the Keith Miller Memorial Invitational for oh. Chad's dad that passed away, and he gave back all the time. Chad Miller, it is that not your dad yet. Maybe we should have. Maybe your moose hunt should be named after your dad to start making some jokes. Sorry, uh, I shouldn't, but I do anyway. No, no, and, and I want. I just want to clear up for everybody listening and you guys. I was not meaning no disrespect in that. I was leading right. Mark into saying what it was. Right. And I, I wanted to say Chad Miller instead of you, Chad Piranha, because they would be like, wait, Chad Chad goes by Piranha on the podcast, but his real name is Miller. No, there's two Chads that we know. There's two Chads. <laughs> I know a couple yeah. more Chads, but we usually don't mention them. Yeah. Um, the... <laughs> Keith Miller Memorial Invitational. They want to do this baseball tournament every year, um, showcasing, you know, younger players and like the high school kids getting ready to go to college. So there's going to be an all-star game for high school kids. There's a tournament for under 12, which is going to be awesome. And then Saturday night's a, a big blow off of wrestling. Everybody gets to hang around and watch some wrestling. Your shirt. I gave you props oh, for your Oh, thanks. Shirt. Yeah, I appreciate that. My collar and elbow shirt. Yeah. yeah. Oh, speaking of <laughs> collar and elbow, we have a promo code for them, don't we? We do. Um, it is Can Crushers. Capital C and Can, capital C and Crushers. You spell it all as one word. Uh, and you save a pretty decent amount of money. 
How much, Chad? 10%. Yeah. Or parking and shipping. John's favorite two things to pay. I think parking at the Keith Miller Memorial Invitational will be free. So it would help you in shipping this week. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, guys, when we come back, because this was a little bit longer than we thought, but we rambled. Uh, When we come back for the second segment, we're deep diving into our favorite IWC event, Reloaded, the reset button. And holy hell, what an event to come back to Court Time Sports for. You ready, guys? Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand. The wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. This is the B to the C to the S to the T to the double E L E, Benjamin C. Steele, Mr. Steele, if you're nasty. Ladies, remember, none of you can be first, but a whole bunch of you can be next. You're listening to the Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast, and if you're not... You are the worst part of society. If you are, share it with a friend, because as good as it is that you're listening, it's even better if more people listen. So do it. Welcome back, Can Crushers listeners. It is I, the English professor. Um, Not in studio, but joined in my home by our host, Mark the Mark. Uh, Chad, the glorious guru, is in his home. Um, We are going to cover IWC Reloaded from last night, which is our favorite show. Um, We didn't mention this in the first segment. Very quickly, you guys both got the NWA pay-per-view. Quick thoughts on that or any thoughts on that? Chad, do you want to go first? Um, I thought, honestly, it was an okay pay-per-view. They are one... That needs the fans, yeah, yeah, and a a, a a venue. It can be a small venue, um, but they need they need that to make this more attractive. The talent is there, um, but this is going to be. And we just talked about this off camera. For me to buy another pay per view, there's there's going to have to be some changes. Uh, different matches, different talent, venue, stuff like that. Yeah, there wasn't anything much that that made me want to... The matches were fine. Both women's matches were fine. But there wasn't much that made me want to come back and and get another pay-per-view or watch a weekly show. Uh, The main event, I saw that dusty finish coming a mile away. I don't think anybody was fooled. Yeah, that was about it. I really only watched the the women's title match between Deeb and Camille and the uh, Murdoch against all this match from the pay-per-view. I took it the other way then. I gave Tuesday another shot, and I tried to watch their power show. Um, I like the announcement that they are going to have... They're having back-to-back pay-per-views, though. I I think this is a bad thing. They're doing a pay-per-view on a Saturday, which is all women's. I'm all for that. I'd like to see that. Maybe that's the one I I buy to see if Rosa comes back and some of the other women that want to showcase. And that's all going to be ran by Mickey James, so I'm excited for that. But then the following day, they're going to have another one of their NWA pay-per-views. And I would imagine this is going to be a men's show since the the women are all on the show the night before. Um... Continuity was kind of off. Like, we were last year, well, not last year at this time, but when it first came back, we were high on the horse of NWA, how it was great when it came back. And I always said they were the ones that could have ran because they had their own studio, and there's something that they really lost. 
in the whole COVID. And I echo both of you. I don't, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Is it time to take the belt off of all this? 997,000 days now. Yeah, I think maybe, but who do you put it on? Is Trevor Murdoch the right one to put it on? Um, they need something. They need to grab somebody and say, wow, he went to NWA. Um, would it be Braun Strowman in 90 days? Would it be, you know, somebody else that was just released? I, I don't know. It, it all depends on, I hate to say it, how time turns and plays out and stuff, but yeah, I wasn't, okay was probably the, the high end. I was like, eh, it was a pay-per-view. Only two hours, so it was actually just yeah. a show. Yeah. But the the one thing that was the most entertaining thing out of it was Trevor Murdoch's interview afterwards. Dropping the F bomb? Where they're where they're talking yeah, they're talking he's like, shit. He's like, I don't know what the fuck I have to do. Drop the G D in there. Yeah. And I'm like looking at it, I'm like I mean, my jaw is dropping at this point. It's not like I've never heard those words, but, you know, they fired Jim Cornette for a 35-year-old tasteless joke, and then he's like, fuck, goddamn, fuck, shit, shit, throws his hands up. Did you think that was a good Trevor Murdoch? No, Trevor Murdoch's speech is, like, a lot slower, but yeah. Not as snappy as what Chad was doing. Right. Yeah. Right. All right. IWC Reloaded. Yeah. Uh, first first show on fight. And I'm thinking they had some kinks. I didn't watch it. Clearly, we didn't. None of us watched the show because we were at the event. Yeah. Um, we were getting there rather late, but we weren't late at all. Big, big surprise there. <laughs> you guys... If there is an event you can be late for, you will be late. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to argue with you. Book your funeral seven to ten hours before you want it to happen. <laughs> that way you show up on time. Well, the card started at 7 o'clock, yeah. and we were there at 6.59. Yep. We sat down. First of all, I, uh, it was Thank a great you. night. It was a great night. But I didn't understand the seating arrangement. It was told, like, you know, front row is 35, everything else is 25. That's fine. Sit wherever you like. So as soon as we walk in, boom, bleachers right there. I met a friend there. Who was sitting in that bleacher. Who was sitting in that bleacher. So we all just sat together. And this lady says, and my friend could hear it better. I heard something about potting, which I guess is... Tide pods, what you do laundry with. Ah, okay. Or that weird generation bites into them, the Tide Pod Challenge. Maybe. I don't know. But I, I think it's a new COVID term. Like, hey, when you want to sit with just a group of people, it's a pod. We're potting. Ugh. And she asks us to move. And I couldn't quite hear. So I asked my friend. I'm like, you know, I can't hear I could just pick up bits and pieces. And essentially, she was worried about COVID. And they had an idea for a pod. You know, lady, you bought general admission tickets like we did. It means you sit among the masses or stay home. If you're that concerned, for $9.99 a month, you can watch it in the comfort of your own home. And you don't have to worry about me sitting next to you. But we moved. My friend got up and I, we followed suit. And Mark, you said like anybody that dared come within a certain I watched her distance of her, I she asked him to move. Lady, stay the fuck home, lady. People like you aggravate the shit out of me. Ugh. So then we get the wrestling. Yeah, which was great. Oh, it was great. Uh, I love the little tees um, right off the bat. The regular, the regulators. Chris LaRusso. Max called them the regulars at one <laughs> point. I think that's what you were thinking. It was. Someone's friend, Max. Shout out to Max. He makes an event awesome. He does. Yeah. He does the best Joey Styles I've ever heard. In my yeah. Life. Oh, my a God. Lot, though. A yeah. lot. 
A lot he does it. Yeah. Yeah. And he marked out a lot he did last night. Um, the regulators came out, LaRusso and Lawless, and it was kind of like the pre-show match and kind of, hey, Fight TV might not be ready yet. And I'll, I'll get words back of all of this from Jeremy from 2 to 1 Media uh, once he listens to this and says, Mark, that that's not it. Plumber just forgot to plug something in. And I'm like, oh, well, yeah, that, that makes that sense. Yeah. And not Jenny, because she was giving hugs at the door. So, um. I like this. I like the shtick that they do because they're so great on the mic. And we get to see this is a thing because we were also behind the speakers where we were sitting. I have no idea who the hell Levi's last name is, but he's Amish. Yeah, yeah, that was interesting. I thought it would be against everything in which he believes to fight. Right. But he's a good fighter. He's a good wrestler. Maybe he's out breaking out of the Amish community. And they have reality shows about yeah, that. Yeah. So, Chad, did you like the first little taste that we had? Yeah, it was a, it was a good it was a good little match. I mean, I, I was kind of impressed. Um, two two things. When Chris Larusso came out, I legit didn't fucking recognize him. I thought it was uh, what was that? Uh, Mikey Whipwreck from fucking ECW. God, I'm going to hear about that, too. All right. That's who I thought it was. I'm like, they didn't even introduce Whipwreck? What the fuck? And I was like, oh, my God, that's Chris LaRusso. And Vinny's like, no. I was like, yeah. He's like, Dad, what the hell did he do? And then the second thing, I gotta, I gotta go back here. John, you said you have a friend that you met there. Yeah, we made plans to meet there. Yeah, I was just stuck on John having a friend thing. Yeah, believe it or not. But okay, we can, we can go on from that. Okay. Did you like Levi? I, I liked his. I, I I liked what we saw of him. He he reminded me of a little little version of uh, Roadkill from Yes CW. <laughs> yeah. He had this moment where he had like um he had the guy by the wrist and he had his knee in his uh like shoulder. his side and his shoulder, yeah. And was like turning his arm. It looked devastating. And you know, I said to Mark, he's probably used to churning butter for six to eight hours a day. So he he's built those muscles um to maximum efficiency. And that had to be really painful. Yeah. He gets the, the win with a small package over Lawless. And do we see big things from Levi here? That's a big win over Lawless. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Yeah, absolutely. We see him again. You would have matched like that. I would imagine you're coming back for more. Then we get to the main show, as we say. And the first match was Swole Patrol against the main event. And whoever wins this match gets a shot at the Northeastern tag team champions at the next event that they're going to kind of collab with on July 9th in Bellevue, which is a Friday night. Bell in- Vernon. I live in Bellevue. Yeah, that. Yeah. Well, they were just going to do it in your lawn. They just oh. moved it today. Oh, I got plenty of room in the backyard. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. All right. Isn't well, Bellevue the prison? The penitentiary? <laughs> penitentiary? Yeah, it's also um, uh, a place for uh, people with... Um, Psychiatric needs uh, in New York City, Bellevue Hospital. Yeah. That's why John lived in, it? in one and now moved to the other. Yeah, so fitting. Bell Vernon, for the record, everybody. Yeah, it, yeah, <laughs> it's going to be in Bell Vernon. Um, so the main event, right off the bat. Gets locked and loaded in this match. They don't get down and dirty because they are. Good guys. Yep. They, they are great. Um, this was a, I, I liked it. It was a quick match, essentially. And I think they're the right ones to showcase next month because let's, let's face it, guys. I've been always ragging on these guys forever. These guys need to be someplace. They're they awesome. Yeah. They're, they're in phenomenal shape. You never get a bad match out of these guys. Takes two to tango, so shout out to Swole Patrol. Is that yeah. what you called them? Yeah, they were very good. They hit one spot where they went for 
um, like that Dudley's, uh, the Dudley cutter. Okay. Yeah. But he actually like, he didn't drop him straight down. He dropped him almost into like a stone cold stunner. Uh, that looked vicious. That looked absolutely devastating. What, what is that? I'll, you'll see where I'm going. With it. What is that? Like seven foot eight guy that's in, uh, NXT that Beth Phoenix has a thing for. Oh, uh, Austin, Austin Theory. Theory. Austin Theory. I thought that that little Austin Theory dude on the Swole Patrol, that little short guy, that that thing where he stood on the guy's back and did the test of strength. Oh yeah, that was some classic shit there. Okay, yeah. that was good. Yeah, we we had some other fans that wanted to sit with us, uh, sit beside us, and they said that was a great spot. That and it was. It was a great spot where it was Duke Davis in the ring and. Um, VJ of Soul Patrol. And you know what? It was just long enough to where the referee gave him several warnings. You can't do that. Get out of the ring. Okay, I'm going to put a count on you. I'm telling you, I'm putting a count on you. All right, one, two. He got to four, and the other guy was out of the ring. You know, it, it, it was timed nicely so that the believability of, hey, you're going to get DQ'd if you don't leave was, was still there. Yeah. Shout out to referee Joe Mandak. Did you see every time there was a tag, he would do the tag and then like he he'd go, you know, slap his hands together and say, Tag! And then like flex like where's the beach? This way. Yeah. That way. Guys got guns. If I was that referee, I'd show him off too. Yeah. Joe Mandak. He's an ROH referee as well. Is he? Yeah. I you know, I bet he had as ripped as all four guys in that match were, they had to, like, you know, kind you think of... think pound for pound, he was the best-looking man in the ring? Absolutely. Yeah. I think they were second-guessing themselves when they would see him flex. And he's not even trying. He's just saying, tag, you're out, you're in. But he's showing the biceps every time. All it's right. like they were scared. It's like they, they had to get in. They thought they were going to get a count. And get disqualified for not getting in or not listening to yeah. him, or maybe he was going to clothesline him or something. Yeah, I don't know. He, he looked like he was a beast. They you know, like Brock Lesnar style running ass kicker. They obeyed his commands. They did. They all four guys obeyed his commands. They didn't play because he don't play. Right. Um. Shout out to CJ Sensation, who wasn't on the card tonight. Uh, we saw him after the event hobbling around. He uh, broke his leg, it looks like, but he oh, was doing geez. other duties, um, I think, behind the curtain because he had headphones on and everything. So CJ still uh, there. I think he's in a position sort of, uh, of elder statesmanship where the other referees go to him on a night where he doesn't work. They go to him and look for advice and, you know, hey, I'm not clear on this one part of the rule book. Can you help me out? And CJ's there with that information for them because he's been around a long time. Oh, really? you, you know, like the referee we just saw that you said. Joe Mandak. From uh, ROH. ROH. Thank you. you know, how do you guys do things at IWC? Is it a little different? And and CJ fills them in. Right. So great win for the main event. Um I didn't see the finisher as fast as it ended. I, I mean, I saw it, but I mean, out of nowhere. Uh, yeah, yeah. They do that thing where they throw a guy up in the air, and then the other guy kind of, I think maybe Duke throws him up in the air, and then they come down with like... What's the uh, other guy's name? Do you know it? Uh, yeah, Duke, uh, again, okay. comes down with um, essentially like a belly-to-back suplex, and he was clear across the ring, and it looked like he turned on and said, oh, shit, when he saw him in the air and caught him at the last possible second. It looked devastating, but it looked like he was going to be like a second too late. Turns out the timing was absolutely spot on. Um, those guys are awesome. To your point, Mark, they they need to be somewhere. Somewhere they need to be on a weekly TV show or something. They they've got a, a great look. I, I think I, I'm finally coming back around to them now yeah. since I, I pretty much know the fraternity is not coming yeah, back anymore yeah. and they were the ones who beat in it. Shout out to the fraternity. Yeah. All right. Let's go on to the triple threat match where Chad had front row seats to this. It was for the Super Indy title. It was big time Bill Collier against the reset button. And earlier in the week, he's like, I don't want to take on just one person. I want to take on two. 
So the reset button has to pick two people. Do 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 do. We get Mance Warner. Crowd goes apeshit. And then we get the other do 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 do, and it's Matthew Justice. Chad, I know you're a huge MLW fan. How was it when you saw Mance Warner come out of those curtains? I about shit. Everybody, the, you know, the the boys that were with me, they they looked at me like, "Who's that?" As you know, went down his freaking resume and MLW and everything like that. I said, "This match is going to be a brawl, and it's going to be a hard hitting match." And lo and behold, uh, look what it turned out to be. Yeah, this was unbelievable. <laughs> I, I made a joke maybe that it started with a chop fest, but they weren't chops like we would give us three. Like, if us three in this match, the chops were, those were chops heard around the world. At one point, I don't remember who got it, but I thought their chest should have just imploded. You could see Big Time's chest, even from where we were sitting, was just blistered red. Yeah. Yeah. I like that both guys went after him. I yes, and he he had to fight them off. And at some point, you would think, oh, they're going to go for the usual one tries for a pin, and the other one pulls them off. They never really fought each other. This was almost essentially a two on one match. Yeah. Uh, my prediction was that Collier loses; he's gone. I, I really thought that. I'm like, okay, this is maybe Super Indies right around the corner. You can have one of these guys hold the title for a little bit. Uh, come back, maybe lose it at Super Indie Tournament, and then Collier gets his beef going to AEW, where he deserves to be. Um, he does keep the title. Spoiler, he keeps the title. So we thank God we get to have big time big Collier around for a while. At one point, um, head referee for the night, Potter, was under fire because they were just gunning chairs into the ring, and he was huddled in the corner, scared like a... Yeah. Child. Yeah. Yeah. It got, it, it was physical right from the get go and it got violent as it went on. As Chad mentioned, into the crowd, he had a front row seat to that. Um, Chad, you said you saw the chair that was launched right at him, right at big time? Yeah. We, no, it was, uh, the, the third guy. I'm sorry. I don't, I can't remember his name. Matt Justice. Matt Justice. Um, they, him and Mance were fighting on the side and, uh, they, we, I mean, we were right there. Literally Vinny could have reached out and grabbed them. That's how close we were. And the chair shot, he just picked up the chair and fucking launched it. We're not talking toss it politely so he can catch it and you can lightly kick it. There was no hands up. That chair shot, it bent the fucking chair. Wow. And it, it, he just threw it like it. It almost looked like some team should sign him up for the baseball next next weekend. <gasps> the way he threw that chair. There's a lot of teams. <laughs> yeah, the Yankees could use him. Um, I like the ending to this match because. Oh, go ahead, Chad. It's. I think I'm he's sorry, uh, John. I don't mean to interrupt, but you've mentioned. You mentioned the Yankees. I have some trivia for you guys. Baseball. And I bet neither one of you can get this without hitting Google. I'm not going to hit Google. I like Google. Or, like, All type right. in Google. Okay. I mean, I I would have thought I would have had to explain that to John being the we get it. technological. I would, I, person, I would just, but yeah. Not, yeah. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't expect that from you, Mark. But anyway. What is the shortest player to ever play professional baseball? And he did play for the Yankees. Phil Rizzuto? No, his name is Eddie something. Oh, uh, I was going to go Yogi Barrett next. They were both pretty tiny. No, his name is Eddie nope. something. Not even close. Any idea how tall this guy? I, I'd have to look the name up. I just remember seeing this earlier this week on one of my Facebook pages. How tall was he? Anthony would know this. He was like 4'7", I think. 
three foot seven. Wow. See, I three had seven. Said, yeah. His only appearance, and it was a legitimate contract. He was a legitimate player. His only appearance, he was walked I, in four straight pitches. I think he was an Indian. I don't think he was a Yankee. I swear they said he was a Yankee. Eddie Goodell. 3-7. And one plate appearance. And... The St. Louis Browns. Yeah. St. Louis Browns. Yeah, because they had the Cardinals, and the Browns were sort of the... Uh, yeah. A clownish team that... that did stuff like that. So I was close. I said it was Eddie somebody, and, and it was 4-7, seven seven, but it was 3-7. Right. I didn't say he was 7 inches. No, no, you had the 7 inches part right. You said 4-7, yeah. but he was actually 3-7. Yeah. What the... My, my only thought when I saw this was, what the fuck kind of strike zone is that? Yeah. The same strike zone is generally bigger than this dude was. Same strike zone I give the kids. 7 inches. I threw that up there for Chad to hit, and he completely whiffed on it. Yep. That was out there for way too long for you not to say anything about it. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I, I just I'm, I didn't want to get you any worse than I did with uh, choking the chicken in the right. Thank kitchen. You. Um, big time takes a chair, smashes it over one guy's head, and bent the freaking thing. Throws it at the other guy who catches it. That was Mance. Okay, that was Mance. <clears throat> so he hit, he hit, what, Justice over the head with it? Okay, throws it to Mance. Now, mind you, last month... He got his right arm worked on pretty heavily to where anything, any offense he had with the right arm was painful. Apparently, that's completely healed. Yeah. To the point where he can punch through a chair. So if you if you are thinking I'm going to hold this chair in front of me, maybe not even as a weapon, but just as a shield against big time Bill Collier, guess what? He'll punch you in the face through the chair. He'll punch the chair. The chair will punch you, and then it's lights out, and Bill Collier wins anyway. And after the match, Justice says, hey, uh, wrestling's going to be back here at Court Time Sports on July 17th. I challenge you to a, uh, he says this long-winded, but I challenge you to a no-DQ match for that Super Indie title because I held it at one point, and Bill says, bring it on, bitch. And it should have only just been that long, as long as you just summed it up. It was a little too long yeah. to say, hey, look, I challenge you. Right. Yeah. Good stuff, though. Excellent trios match. What yeah. the kids are calling trios match these days. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next matchup, we get the high stakes championship. Uh, Lebanon Dawn has to defend against the reset button. And my prediction was coming into this because we we talked on the way to the event. I thought Tito was going to be predi- uh, picked, and he would just run through Lebanon Dawn. Yeah. The kids thought they were going to get the Polka Doom. Yeah. And Tito was going to lay down. Instead, I mean, the reset button could pick anybody, folks. Anybody. As we'll see here in just a bit. It picks Nick Lendl, who was doing color commentary with Joe. Dombrowski. Yeah. Who was a Can't Crusher alum. Both of them. Yeah, yeah. Nick does the intro to our show. Yeah. Um, He wasn't prepared to fight, and I get it. But Nick, buddy. You've been around <sighs> IWC long yeah. enough that you know. Yeah, you have to be ready. Um, Strike first before they strike you, you know? He got the ever-loving shit kicked out of him. You know, Jesse Ventura in 1985 left the broadcast booth to go wrestle a match. He teamed with Roddy Piper and Bob Orton against the Hillbillies. Then went back to doing commentary. Jerry Lawler went one step further and did commentary for his own match against some squash guy. I thought Nick Lendl was going to take it further than that, but he kind of went the other direction. Chad? I was laughing when this when this happened, but before that, Vinny's pumped. Vinny was, I mean, he, th- that kid was about to come out of his skin. He was so pumped for this wrestling. And he said, I wonder who it'll be. I said, Vinny, what are you going to do if it's you? I said, anybody in here is eligible. He's like, if my picture comes up, I'm running for the door. (laughs) 
I'm not getting I'm not getting in the ring. And then when Nick got picked, Vinny's like, Oh, he's dead meat. <laughs> <laughs> and that he was. And that he was. It was a quick, real quick uh Nick really didn't get his tie off. No, and they embarrassed him after the match, uh, with the camel clutch and the Lebanon Don sticking his foot in his face. Um Eventually, we get some heroes from the locker room, and there must have been two or three of us from our group and the groups around us. Like, where the hell were you guys four minutes ago? Yeah. But that's pro wrestling. The good guy gets the ever loving hell beat out of him, and then the other good guys make the save, but they're always just a little too late because the bad guys are dastardly. Which I'm excited to go back, and then from here on out, not that I'm not going to watch the whole thing at some point, but here on out, we get the. Uh, luscious voice of BC Steel returning to help Joe Dombrowski. Yet another can Crusher alum. Yeah. But he, he goes after Joe, and I thought, oh my god, this is just a night to beat up on ring announcers or play-by-play guys. I don't know, he got him in like a sleeper hold there for a second. Yeah. But then he joined him. I think he wanted to show like, he's I'm the in, man. Yep, I'm in charge here, not you, Joe. So you beat him up and you take his place. Yeah. It's wrestling. Look, that's what happens. You get beat up and you get your place taken. Next up, I was just open. Justin Plummer was going to go in as oh. an announcer, and somebody was going to beat him up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree. Next up, we have the tag team title match, Money Shot, um, with Dime Peace, and we'll get to that. We'll be defending their tag team championship. So let's stop there before we get to the reset button. Oh my God, Dime um, Peace! Hello, Dime Peace. You know, you're allowed to wear clothes. I'm not sure if you're aware. You are. I should not be one to talk about people in their underwear, as I was in my underwear when Mark showed up to my house. But, you know, the top was nothing more than a bra, and the bottom was nothing more than a pair of underwear. Well, she had fishnets on as well. Okay. So that was good enough. Okay. She should have dressed like Megan Nelson, who had a prom dress on over in the corner. Yeah. Flaunting at all the gentlemen walking by. We saw uh, Dime Piece after the event, and she had more. She was wearing more after the event than she was wearing at the event. Right. Yeah. We got hugs though. Yeah. I was excited about that. More on that a little bit though. Yeah, we'll we'll touch on that later. Um, So they're defending the tag team titles, and the first person that the reset button picks is the sexy fireman. So I'm like, all right. And he's been doing well. He has been doing he well. He looks like he lost a lot of weight. He's in better shape. Yeah, he's doing better in the ring. Go ahead, Chad. No, I wasn't interrupted. I just, uh, when you make the announcement of the second person, I have something. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. And the next person coming out, never expected to see in 2021 in IWC, Bushwhacker Luke. Yeah, we went nuts when we heard that. I looked like John threw me off the bleachers again in middle school. Only this time you jumped on your own volition. I didn't need to throw you off the bleachers. I went apeshit and marked out. Marked out. I am Mark the Mark. I never thought Bushwhacker Luke was going to be here, and I was insane, John. So he came all the way from New Zealand on the off chance he would get picked by the reset button. I'm glad he did. Yeah. I, I'm glad he did, because... COVID restrictions, though. So he had to have been planning this for... Yeah, a while. A good while. Yeah, yeah. Um, Max looked up... Was it Max who looked up his age and said he's 74? Yeah. I mean, holy cow, I hope I can move like that at 74. I can't it's, move like that yeah. at 44, so... I hope I can shoot a clothesline like that when I'm 74. Yeah. Shot a ton of great clotheslines. Uh, I don't care what happened in this match. I was excited. He, to I said, you know, I guarantee he's going to bite somebody's ass. And he did. We didn't get the... Um, the battering ram. The battering ram. We didn't get the... Um, pit stop. I, the pit stop, I know, was more the nasty boys. But didn't the sheep... Maybe not the bushwhackers, but didn't the sheep herders do that too? Where they would rub your face in the other guy's armpit? I think so. I thought we'd get that. We didn't get that. Um... 
But yeah, we get eventually uh, both tag team champions running around in circles with their asses hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. We get more ass after the match. We get a, I don't know, maybe it was during the match, but we get a Bronco Buster from the Sexy Fireman. And we get Bushwhacker Luke saying, let me take it to another level. He takes his shorts down and sticks his ass in uh, Mandime's face. How would you like a 74-year-old ass in your face? I would not. I would not. Chad, <laughs> touch on this. No, I'm not going to touch on this. At all? Nope. Nope. I'm just like I'm scarred and can never get that vision out of. I, I wanted to dig my eyes out with spoons. <laughs> as bad as Rey Mysterio? <laughs> No, this this legit, if I would have had a spoon, I probably would have dug my eyes out to get that out of my mind. All right, all joking aside, you were excited to see Bushwhacker, though, weren't you? Oh, uh, I was, that music hit, and I was like, no fucking way. And for 74 years old, the guy is in great shape. For, and, and for those who... Yeah, we remember the Bushwhackers, WWE, you know, one of the shortest uh, Royal Rumble entrants, you know, come in the ring one side and got instantly thrown out the other. No, I remember these guys as the sheep herders yeah. in Mid-South and stuff like that when they were bastards. Um, them and the Fantastics were some of the most brutal tag team matches I've ever seen in wrestling, period. Um, but just to see these guys, see him, phenomenal shape for a man that age and somebody who's been in wrestling as long as he is, um, I think he did fucking awesome in this match. I agree. The clotheslines were crisp. I'm telling you, they were great. I, I loved it. Um, of course... Uh, money shot retains. They get the pin on sexy fireman. Yeah, because uh, the bushwhacker went after um, dime piece. the dime piece. She caused a distraction. Well, she wanted an extra look at that sexy man that he is. Yeah, yeah. She she yeah saw his booty and was like, "Holy cow!" Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, he chased he her back to the. the Go ahead. The fireman got pinned, but he was not the leading right. man in the ring. Yep, you're right. You're right. So I think there needs to be a rematch, but instead of the sexy firemen, we need to have the bushwhackers against those two jackoffs. Um, I don't think Butch yeah. can move at all. Yeah, I think he. I mean, for the for the Hall of Fame, he had two canes. I don't know if that's still the case or not. No, it the, was two Undertakers that wrestled, never two canes. Oh, you're right. Sorry. Oh my God! No, he walked the two canes. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, good one, good one. You brought that up last night. That's yeah. been in my head since then. Yeah. Um, Glad you got it out of your system. After the match, though, you know, Bushwhacker came back out and he got the kids to walk around. So we sent our two up. Yeah. Max and Sylvan, and he's like, started lying this, that, and the other thing. So one kid went with them. So we said, hurry up, get up there, do the bushwhacker walk. They got up there and they became too cool. Yeah, they were too cool for school. Yeah. Um, Chad, we know the answer to this. Would If you were allowed to do the bushwhacker walk around the ring, would you have been in that line? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they should have let us. Up there. I was up there and it, this is how old school I was. When he was going around the ring, I was like, I wonder if, and this is totally unsanitary, but I wondered if he was going to do the whole thing of grabbing the people, somebody, and licking their heads. Did you want it? As bad as it's going to sound, yeah, I wanted it. Yeah. yeah. I, unfortunately, those, I think those days are over, but I'd be okay if he brought that back. Yeah. If we go somewhere... Okay, you got too much hair for that. You do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you got you to gotta be a, a bald person or, or you know... Uh, follically challenged like myself. Um, yeah, yeah, you got too much hair. For, you're too much of a pretty boy for that. Yeah, you're probably right. <coughs> Next matchup is a 16-bit challenge. Uh, guys, if you don't know what this is, it's essentially like the Money in the Bank match, 
Uh, just different. You don't have to climb the ladder or anything. You get 16 competitors in the ring. The one who wins the match gets this computer that at any point in the next year can hit it and get a title shot. And the reset button picks everybody. And this is where all hell breaks loose as well. Yeah, so the concept is, is brilliant. It's a combination of things. You've heard us talking about you know, with some of the territories called an old King of the Ring Battle Royal, where there's a referee in there, you can pin, submit the person, or throw them over the top rope. You know, they did it in Dallas and Georgia. Um, but it kind of combines the elements of a gauntlet and a Royal Rumble yep. with random entrance. So you don't just beat a person and the next person comes in. They come in at random intervals. So and you were getting pissed about that. Yeah, like, okay, it's been about... Is it every two minutes? All right, it's every two minutes. And then, boom, somebody's announced. And then, boom, somebody's announced again. Like, what the hell? It's the reset But button. it's just random. The reset button picks somebody when it feels like it. Which, I don't know if I want to go down this road. Are we giving... Is, is Justin giving the computer too much power? Like, no. are we... You're not worried about a hostile takeover by this electronic system? It's... It's in the contract with the reset button that once a year. Yeah. And they've come to uh, an agreement that this is his show. He's not going to be like the, the GM on Raw years yeah. ago. He gets one full show. The reset button does. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just hope you can trust the reset button. I hope you can trust this computer. But anyway, yeah, it selects people at random. Uh, this match was epic. Um, Spencer Slade is incredible. Cole Carter is freaking fantastic. Those guys put on a clinic from start to end. Shout out to Anthony Young, who did great work in this. Um, Keep going, because there's a lot of IWC names that did great work. We yeah. had some return. I'm a big Cole Carter fan. I love the fact that they beat the holy hell out of this kid. Any chance they got, there were four heels in the ring, three heels in the ring. All right, let's go beat up Cole Carter. That kid just got stomped, stomped from start to finish. He's an amazing athlete. We saw him afterwards, Mark. His back was pretty marked up. Uh, bruises and looked like maybe a cut on his shoulder or something. He, he took an ass whooping and still nearly won the damn thing. Yeah. Well, when that when fucking Jock Sampson was in the ring against him, you got to count that fat bastard for like two or three <laughs> So Yeah, it was like an 18-minute. So like six yeah. or seven on one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a lot of surprises. We get the... And I'm saving the two, Chad. I'm saving the two. We get the return of Jack Pollock. Nice. That was a huge pop. Everybody went nuts for yeah. Jack Pollock yeah. coming back. Um... Hooven came in, but Jamie also came in as well. So is Jamie his weapon that he got to bring in with yeah, him? Yeah, probably. Um, they they have sent a message to La Familia. You guys think you're gangsters. Uh, Hooven and Jamie, they just mess shit up when they show up. Yeah. They do. It doesn't matter. I'm like, oh, here comes some help for Cole Carter. No, they beat him down with the chair. Anybody or anything in their way is getting their ass kicked. Uh, shout out to Calvin. He was selected. I popped for Calvin. I haven't seen him in a while. Uh, we'll save number 16 for last because that the whole point of this is for number 16. Um, coming in at number 6, we don't have to run through everybody. Chad, how pumped were you when you heard the pig squeal? <laughs> oh, my God. I was like, why? I, I I just didn't hit who it was at first. And then it just, you know, the light went on enough. There was enough electricity there and the light went on. I was like, oh, my God, you got to be kidding me. Dude, Henry Godwin. Yes. Again, oh, another bleacher God. jump for me. Another bleacher jump for me because I am that guy. Lost a ton of weight. Looks great. He really does. Moved well. Honestly, it didn't seem like he missed the beat. He had the bucket with him, and he twirled it around, Um, and nothing came out of it. Now, Mark's all of a sudden, that night, he's telling me, because then he dumps it later on Ella Shea. No, it was Chase Gold. Well, okay, he dumped it in their direction. Um, 
and Mark's like, don't you remember physics with centrifugal force? And meanwhile, Mark just said, I don't think there's anything in that bucket. So don't act like you got, you, you were better at physics than I was. Uh, but no, he was twirling the bucket around the entire time. And then he dumps it and like this disgusting vomit looking crap comes out. So I don't know how it stayed in there. Like not a drop fell out while he was spinning it around. Maybe if there are physics majors out there that could explain it to us, we'd like to know. Um, this is what I love about pro wrestling is you have a guy like Chase Gold, which by the way, doesn't he look like he smells great? Yes. Think about like high school guys. If you were going to go out and you got, you know, you put on nice clothes, you showered, you shaved, you put on nice clothes, you did your hair. That's what he looks like. He looks like he smells great. And he's in the ring with a pig farmer. Um, that's what I love about pro wrestling. And Ella Shea, you know, maybe she had a point. Like, I don't want my guy fighting this guy. We went through a lot of trouble to smell as great as we do. Not that they smell bad generally, but, you know, they, they like to smell great. Um, why do we have to mix it up with a pig farmer? But you have to. I'm sorry, Ella. You have to. It's pro wrestling. Um, he makes quick work of Chase Gold. And then to add insult to injury, dumps a slop over their heads. Number 16 was ended up being the winner. It was Balk Nasty. Um, Spencer Slade ran the gamut from 1 to 16 as Balk threw him out. Either one would have been great to see win. Balk oh, will probably see later on. Since we've taken up most of this match, Chad, what are your thoughts? Oh, this I I enjoyed this. I it is so hard to see Bulk Nasty get, you know, people rooting for him. It's I mean, I I've rooted for Brock Lesnar before and found that easier than Bulk Nasty. And then it was like, wow. you know, when I, yeah, I mean, in the one match that I rooted, loved Brock Lesnar in, is when he absolutely thrashed Cena in seven minutes, just fucking beat him pillar to pillar to post. Um, but Bulk, I I find myself rooting for him because he's after that fat bastard. He's gonna kill him at some point. Yeah. And I hope I'm there for that. You're going to be. I would like to see him, like, give Jock Sampson the snake eyes off of the steel ring post or something like that. Good Lord. Uh, speaking of rooting for people, uh, I won't tell the story again, but, you know, the fraternity was getting a huge reaction back in the day, so they beat up Britt Baker and everybody hated the fraternity after that. Um, I think uh, you you can't make a heel out of um, Spencer guy, Slade. Spencer Slade, thank you. Yeah, we went over this. Uh, the guy that started the match, Spencer Slade. The reaction that guy gets when he comes out. Besides his mother. Even. Besides his mother, yeah, yeah. Um, he is way over. He's getting chants. Um, you can't hate this guy. No. He's too good of a worker. Looks too good in the ring. You can't hate the guy. So I'm not sure what you do about that. Maybe, maybe he needs to beat up someone on the women's roster to, to get some heat because the fans love him. Yeah. And I thought he was going to run the gamut. I thought he was going to get rid of bulk. The only thing I'll say about this match that I didn't like a lot of too many full, uh, a lot of too too many false eliminations. That's the only thing. You know, I don't know how many times Bulk got thrown out but didn't get thrown out. Young Tony. Yeah. Same with um, the guy that started the match. Spencer Slade. Spencer Slade. <laughs> uh, you know. Good thing he likes me and not you. Yeah. Yeah. He gets thrown out but didn't really get thrown out. Yeah. Other than that, it, it was superb. Really. Start to finish. Yeah. Um... Next up, we have the women's match. Katie Arquette will be defending the women's title against the reset button. And it's Jody Threat. I don't know who Jody Threat is. Yeah, and you know everybody. Yeah, I, I don't. Chad, did you know Jody Threat? 
I had no clue whatsoever who the hell this was. So I then jumped on Instagram. Soup and I were, you know, doing some research. Uh, she's more of a, a hardcore fighter. She she wrestles a lot of intergender stuff. Um, she's going through tables. She's going through doors. She's she's going through, you know, as Max would say, the ogre violent stuff. So I thought this was a very good match. Yeah, I, I had no idea who she was either, but I thought this was. I'd like to see excellent. more of her. I would too. Yeah, yeah. Have her back because that was a very good match. Um, so Britt was on the screen for a split second as someone who could get picked. Right. Uh, ultimately, she wasn't, but she does show up. Her music hits, and uh, the boys went ape shit when they she did. came out. Well, that's because Jody had the the belt, and this is where Mandak takes it in the face. Yeah, uh, the old jujitsu trick: do the opposite of what you want them to do. So you know you want him to smash himself in the face with a belt. So you pull on it. Then when he goes to pull on it, you let go. Bam! He smacks himself in the face with the belt. We don't hit ourselves in the faces with championship belts at jujitsu. Oh, you don't? No, we don't. But I'm just saying, like. You know, you want to take a guy this way, maybe push him that way, so that he resists, and then you take him the other way. But yeah, he gets smacked in the face with a belt, um, and this is where Britt comes out. And helps probably one of her biggest enemies yeah. in IWC, hits her with the swinging neckbreaker. Yeah, yeah. Um, this just reminded me of a match they had several years ago where I went to get Katie's autograph. And uh, she had gotten kicked in the face, super kicked in the face by Britt. And I said, uh, Katie, you took quite a kick to the teeth there. She goes, yeah, I did. I said, um, and I started chuckling. I said, I know a dentist. And she gave me those. She goes, oh, do you? And I laughed and walked away. But more, more on Katie in a minute. More on Katie in a minute. Because it's a great story. Um, I, I like the match. Chad, what did you think of the match overall, not knowing that we didn't know Jody Threat? I thought it was pretty good. Um, she, uh, Jody Threat seemed to be, uh, very aggressive, which kind of threw, seemed like it threw Katie off in the match. But yeah. then when she pissed Katie off, well, you know what happens. You piss her off, you're gonna, she's gonna start pulling out, you know, whatever the hell she needs to to keep that title. Dastardly things. And one was, uh, having Brit in her back pocket. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. And they hugged it out. I think they had a fierce rivalry. I think there's mutual respect there. Um, you know, hey, Britt, I'm glad you're, you're doing great things. And hey, Katie, you're doing great things. And yeah, mutual respect between two champions who fought each other hard over the years. That takes us to the main event. It is the heavyweight championship match. Andrew Palace against the reset button. A lot of names pop up. A lot of pictures pop up on there. And we get Derek Dillinger. Um, once again, we're all like, who the hell is this? Essentially, right? Yeah. Uh, had not heard of the guy. Doesn't mean it wasn't a good match because it was. But again, not, not sure who this guy was. Chad, did you know Derek beforehand? No. And, and when he come out, I thought it was that... Um he kind of reminded me of that powerhouse Hobbs a little bit. Yeah. And, but I, I had no idea who this dude was. I thought he looked like Taz. Yeah. Yeah. But all in all, a great match between Palace. Um, so the show starts with an inside cradle and ends with an inside cradle, which was crazy. Um, I said, when's the last time you saw a match end with an inside cradle? And your cousin Soup goes, about 40 seconds ago. I was like, oh, man, I must have missed it. Yeah. Yeah, so another laugh at my expense. But yeah, after everything uh, that Palace endured, snags the head, rolls him up, and defends his championship. At the end of the match, the regulators come out, or the regulars, and just start beating on Palace. And then, Balk comes out, and he wants to hit the reset button. Yeah, he does. Um, he's thinking about it, but then uh, it gets stolen. His laptop... Gets stolen. So does he use that for work as well? He can't now. I don't know what he's going to do because it got taken away from him. Did he learn how to read, though? 
He does know how to read. That's that's did, been okay. So so he could use a laptop. He, yes. yes. Right. Now is he advanced enough to where he can show John something? Uh, I think they're on the same level. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hey, Chad, John, I want to bring in a surprise guest for the show. Because after the show, people thought the show was over. But there was another match. And it got the attention of some of the fans in the area. Uh, it was Max versus Sylvan. It was a six-beer match, and people were taking pictures. So I want to bring in... One of the participants of that yeah, match. Sylvan the Slayer. Is that Sylvan good? Sl- yeah. Uh, he took on uh, Mayhem Max. Yeah. Yeah. So, Sylvan, welcome to Can Crushers. Hello. And let's get your inside thoughts real quick about the show. Did you enjoy going to wrestling last night? I did, yes. Yeah. Good stuff start to finish. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Really what was your matches. favorite part of the show? Uh, Probably the Battle Royale. Like the, the, 16 the 16-bit minutes. challenge? Yeah, that was... I agree with that. Which surprise guest did you like the best? Uh, probably Bushwhacker Luke. Uh, probably that was the three of ours yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. But let's talk about the match afterwards, when people thought the event was over. Like, you and Max had a brawl. What, what started this whole thing? Uh... Absolutely nothing. Max was just like, hey, you want to do a little match? And I was like, okay. And so we just fought each other. Yeah. Um, there was a, well, it was more than one spot. My only complaint about the match, they kind of went to the same thing a little too often. Like the high spots were a little too much, kind of lacked in storytelling. You say six beers, I'd give it five, Mark. But there was a point where, Max gave him three German suplexes off the wall behind him. Um, that was pretty devastating. It hurt my neck. Did it and hurt my your neck? head? Yes. Yeah, in your head. How are you feeling today, though? I'm fine. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. We had soup run in with a chair. Yes. That was trying to break Max's ankle. Yes. And then a referee appeared out of nowhere, sliding under the the pitching. Uh, netting. Yeah. And you did a horrible job refereeing. I did a great job refereeing. I even, because we had to go home. I put up the X sign, like, all right, oh, okay, we got an injury. Let's go. These guys wouldn't stop. The match went on and on and on. And on for 40 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Because I didn't get to see a lot of it. I was talking. Yeah. Yeah. To to our adoring Can Crushers fans. They recognize you everywhere you go. Yeah. Um, in the end, I not because he's my kid. I think Sylvan got hosed. He got pinned. But his arm was against the wall, which is technically outside the ring, right, Sylvan? Um, technically, I don't know, but I guess the wall was a turnbuckle or something. But even still, the turnbuckle would be considered out of bounds. Yeah. Chad, what would you think? The, the wall would be the turnbuckle, the, the apron, right? Yeah. Yeah. So is there a rematch then? Probably, yeah. There, there'll be a rematch in the future. Yeah, July 17th? Be. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Who ran interference then at the end of the match? You did. Well, no, it was Cowboy Bob Orton. Cause I, Technically. Yeah, you had a sign, and I wrapped the sign around my arm, and we, we worked over Max with the uh, with the cast. Yeah. Yeah. Max, if you're listening, um, hope you're okay, buddy. We put a beat down on you. You also have a broken ankle, so you can't walk anymore. Yeah. It, it, no, there was some good stuff. Like, Sylvan was really getting the heat over on Max. Max started to hulk up. Vicious chops. Um, yeah, good he stuff. He had a lot of people watching. Yeah, he did they have a did. lot of people watching. They yeah, they were really enjoying it. Anything else you want to add, buddy? Um, no. Yeah? No. All right, well, thanks for Yeah, thanks, thanks for talking. I, I, I well, do have a question for oh, him, though. Chad's got a question for you. Okay. I do got a question for you, buddy. Hold on. Can you Go ahead. Go ahead, Chad. (laughs) Can you show your dad how to change his screensaver picture? Because he said it's been like, like since you were a year and a half old that it's been changed and you were the only one that could teach him how to do it. Okay, I'll change it, I guess, yeah. You want to change? Uh, not just yet. The okay. Yankees kind of suck right now, so maybe I'll want to change it. We'll see. Okay. I'll come to you if I need to change it. Okay. 
All right. Thanks for joining us, buddy. So we just talked to uh, one of the uh, stars of IWC, um, the post-main event match. Sylvan the Slayer. Sylvan the Slayer. Yeah. Getting uh, getting hosed by Max Mayhem. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then after the show, we see the dime piece. She's um, giving Rest. out hugs to her adoring fans. And I said, just be careful. These boys just had like a 40-minute wrestling match. And they're kind of sweaty. And she hugs Sylvan. And she goes, I can see that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then, real quick, uh, we're walking out. And the garage door is open. And John makes that same sign into a Jimmy Hart megaphone. Yeah, well, first, we got a hug from the dime piece. Right. And as we were leaving, I said, man... I should have asked her if Katie would come out and give me a hug. Uh, it doesn't matter. But as we were leaving, to your point, Mark, we see the garage door open. Go ahead. So John makes a megaphone out of this sign and yells through the garage door in this megaphone, Katie! And you're backstage, so you shouldn't be doing this. So we see Jamie come walking, and he just hits the close button. Yeah, I, he kind of did like an, uh... <laughs> Like it was so uncomfortable, and John and you see John's all pumped to see Katie, but as the garage door's going down, so is John's self esteem just rolling down with it. Yeah, I was getting deflated. She had a look on her face like, yeah, this is maybe going a touch too far. How do you feel about that? Heartbroken. No. Um, then we got in the car. And we were about to leave, and I said, I wonder if the garage door's still open. I have to give this one more chance. And we came around and I pulled up and you see people getting dressed. And even then I was like, okay, maybe, You're maybe, a weirdo. Huh? You're a weirdo. Yeah, maybe I've gone a little too far with this. Yeah. <laughs> so overall event, I'll go first. Six. Six beers for me. Chad? I loved every second of it. Ah. Uh. If you remove one part of it, I give it a six. The only thing was Jock Sampson was on there, but I mean, I know Plummer has to give back to, you know, the old and senile people like him. So yeah, I, I still have to give it a six myself. Speaking of those guys, Lawless was trying to get uh, the mask mandate back. You said at the top of the show. Yeah, because there are a lot of us in the audience who need to be wearing masks. Hilarious. Um, this is we said this, you know, on the way home. This has got to be their toughest show because the surprise element has to be there. Um, I'm going to go five and a half because while I was thrilled to see a Bushwhacker and a Godwin, um, we didn't know either of the challengers in the world title matches, the women's and the men's great matches. Absolutely. Great matches. Um, that doesn't, you don't know people in IWC sometimes though, John, right? So how, why did that affect it? Because the whole concept of this show is about the surprises. They were surprises. They were, I didn't think they were huge surprise. I didn't know who those people were. They, they put on very good matches, Okay, but I didn't know who they were. So, so essentially, then we give it five and what well, Chad go, did Chad go six as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. six, six, five and a half. Yeah, about no, five. It wouldn't be five and a half. No, I said five and a half. So five and three quarters. Yeah, yeah, about that. Yeah, which is a hell of a show. Yeah, it was fantastic. It was fantastic. Like I said, uh, July 9th, they have one that they're doing a co with in Bell Vernon with Northeast championship wrestling and then july 17th they will be back at court time sports uh some matches already announced when we get closer to the date we'll cover all of it da -da 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 -da. you know how that works but all right boys uh let's wrap, let's wrap this segment up and come back with uh, a little bit of tidbits and love them while we got them yeah predictions for uh, tonight as well i forgot about that Hey, y'all, uh, this is sam houston i gotta tell you if you want to know the latest in wrestling and what's going on Tune in to Can Crushers every time it comes on. I know I will. Later, y'all. And welcome back, Can Crusher Nation. It is I, the glorious guru, in a beautiful morning in Pennsylvania, cooler weathers. I am joined by two 
together in the Patalano Castle, Mark the Mark Martinez and John the Professor. That might have been the first time we called you the Professor today. I think so, yeah. Well, even though John forgets to introduce me at times and everything like that, I try to take care of him. You do. What do you got for us, Chad? Because, you know, we're tight like that. Fiero de Nero. Miedo. No. So no money is what you're saying. Right. Okay. That's what our podcast is. No ah, money. No money. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, Go ahead, Chad. You got some tidbits for us. So just random little things. Uh, there's a couple more matches announced for the ROH card that uh, Vinny and I will be going to. Um, Flip Gordon is going to be going against EC3. Nice. And there's going to be a last standing mat, last man standing match between Silas Young and, oh my God, I just dropped his name. Pick it up. He was in with, sorry, Mark. I said pick up the name. If you dropped it, pick it up. I, I'm too fat and lazy to pick it up, but shaping up to be a good card. And I got this off of, uh, the Don Morocco podcast. I listened to it uh, this week and late last week. Um, if y'all are going to listen to it, you know, have a few drinks, maybe, you know, hit a few of the uh, bongs off, you know, <laughs> wacky weed and stuff, because Don, Don talks very slow. Um, but anyway... What nationality was Mr. Fuji? Oh, I know. He's Hawaiian. Okay, he was yeah. Hawaiian. He All played a Japanese wrestler. Japanese. Yep, he's Hawaiian. Okay, you guys got that one easy enough. What was Mr. Fuji's two incomes before wrestling? His main incomes? Uh, Butler. I'm going to guess he was in the automobile industry. Let's just guess. He was a mechanic or something. Not because he's Asian. It just <laughs> first thing that came to mind. Man, you're a racist bastard. <clears throat> Sorry. So, so John, you were partially right, but his see his business that he owned was aluminum siding, but it was actually a front for the main money maker. Mr. Fuji and a couple of guys were Fast and the Furious thieves. They stole cars what? and motors for resale. Wow. Morocco talks about this in depth. He was like, oh, yeah, he said Fuji was a fucking thief. He said it was nothing for him and, you know, the other guys to go and lift a motor you know, out of just about any car. He said they never, never stole the whole, you know, full car things. It was always the big ticket items in the car, the, the, you know, the big motors and stuff like that. That's how Mr. Fuji got noticed by the Samoans, Afan Sika, who gave him his first break in wrestling and then, you know, the rest is history. Does he say or do you know if Mr. Fuji's accent was put on? The really thick Japanese accent he had in the broken English? Oh, it was it was pretty much put on. Yeah. Um and he was it was funny Morocco talked about this, which was I found really odd. He said people gave Nikita Koloff crap for always using that that Russian accent, you know, even when he wasn't in front of the cameras and stuff and everything like that. He said Fuji did that, you know, whatever, 30, 40 years before, um, before Nikita did, but with the, the Japanese, he, you know, the talking, talking real quick yeah. was his biggest thing. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, real, real quick, like, 
Japanese talk. And he said Fuji just practiced. He said he thought it was, you know, funny shit to do that. Nice. And and something else that Fuji was, you know, Fuji was a notorious ribber. We, you know, knew that from other interviews and stuff like that. One of his favorite things to do before he, you know, kind of got in trouble for it was, you know, guys – in years back, you when the ring was set up in the olden days, they'd kind of go down, get a feel for the ring. Um, he said this one guy, and I, I can't remember what his name was, um, in Hawaii, used to lay on the ring apron and take a snooze. It was like his his pre match, pre card thing or whatever. Is you know what do you call it? Uh, ritual. Ritual. Yeah. And he said Fuji. Went one time, put rolled up a newspaper and put glue on on one side, and he snuck down. And this guy, this guy was a, a serious fucking sleeper, and he said he put it on the guy's foot, and the guy was you know barefoot, and lit the fucking thing on fire. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And he said, Could "This guy get up and fucking be jumping around the." ring and everything and trying to stomp it out and it wasn't like it was one layer of you know fucking paper no it was like you know a new york times <laughs> sunday edition he would roll up and do this to this guy. that's awesome uh, oh anything else quickly fantastic. yeah no no nothing nothing else all right. All right. So we'll get into Love Them While We Have Them and then make our prediction for tonight. Uh, Love Them While We Have Them is a segment where we celebrate the life of a wrestler or wrestling personality um, while that wrestling personality is still here with us rather than posthumously. In the event they're listening to the show and they know just how much we appreciate him or her. This week is my turn to bring a name to the table. Um, and I'm looking right at the picture that we all took together, Mark, in that cabinet over there with uh, Big Daddy Cool, Diesel, Kevin Nash. Uh, by the way, the guy that, that went to IWC with us last night that I know from the gym was at the event when, before they were known by their by their shoot names, Razor Ramon and Diesel showed up on Nitro. No way. He was at that. Yep. Wow. Yep. My friend Nick was at that show. Um, but yeah, Big Daddy Cool. Who wants to go first? Go ahead, Chad. Oh, wow. Big Daddy Cool Diesel. Um, so, man, something Mark, do you want to go first? Uh, do you want to go first, Mark? Well, Chad thinks of yeah, I, I got anything think positive. Me. All right, that's caught me off guard there. I, I'm gonna look at that night. Okay, that night with Big Daddy Cool Diesel. Um, he stepped in because it was when Flair's son died, so yeah. they called him Lickety Split. And when he had four hooligans jump in the ring with him and said, hey, we're going to do DX or NWO, he's yeah. like, oh, whatever. And then I did the crotch chop. You did. You and Jack I, did the he four. He did the life. four and I did the L. Yeah. And then... Um, Pat Lapino did the two sweet. Yeah. He got into it with us. Yeah. He had a fun time with us, and we took like 87 pictures because none of us were doing something right. It, he was a good guy. Um, his in-ring work it is what it is. It really is. Um, probably one of – we're trying to say good stuff, right? Yeah, yeah that's the idea. That's yeah. the good um, – he entertained me. He entertained me, I guess. Um, yeah, that's overall. Wow, I really stumped you guys. Um, yeah, that night, to your point, when we took a picture, one of us wasn't ready, like the kids we are and were, we complained, like, oh, why were you doing that? And he was behind us making fun of us. Yeah. And he's like, oh, that one's going to be yours. I'm not taking that picture. Why? You know, he was kind of mimicking us in, in that regard. Um, very, very cool guy you know whether in the ring or out of the ring the guy that you want to be your buddy um always nice at these meet and greets in the ring 
I, I'll take it. I, I was entertained. I really was. I don't care what they say about six moves, including the hair flip. Whatever. He's a big guy. You knee him in the corner, stick your foot in his throat. What else do you need to do? Give him a side suplex, which he gets it. Big guys that size should do the goddamn side suplex. That's what he did. Um, he worked at a time when business was down for a while. Um, however, he brought the, it back. He, he, the belt was on the right guy for that time period, for that down period. They made the most out of it by running with him. I, I firmly believe that even more so than my favorite of all time, Bret Hart. Kevin Nash was the right guy at that time. And he did bring it back, Mark, when he showed up on WCW TV with Razor Ramon. And no one knew what th those guys were doing there. Um, I was a big fan. We saw him in St. Mary's teaming up with Shawn Michaels. Um, Dubois. 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 We saw him in St. Mary's against Bob Backlund. Um, and as much as we were cheering for him, even though he was the heel, he did a heelish thing. Like he brushed us off, like, shut up. I don't need you guys cheering for me. Um, I was always entertained whenever he was in the ring and he's always a cool dude to meet at these expos and, and signings and meet and greets. He knows how to be one of the guys with any fan that comes to his table. I Chet's remember him. I, I'm I'm kind of stumped. It, it it it's not a glowing review of him. He was one of the big men that kind of breached the the big man gap in that. Okay, he wasn't you know going to come off the top rope and stuff like that. He did what a big big man was supposed to be. It, he was a bruiser. He was power moves. He wasn't supposed to be anything else than that. Um, you know, the, the best Kevin Nash match I ever saw is not on videotape. It was when I was stationed in Germany and it was right after Shawn Michaels won the title from Bret Hart. And it was a prelude to uh, Shawn and Diesel's, uh, oh, I think it was an in your house match that they had a, you know, fall or not falls, anything goes match, street fight match. Um, boy, he took care of, uh, of Sean in that match, but it was, it was just a punish, you know, he just beat the shit out of him. Um, Probably one of the funniest moments in wrestling history. I got to attribute to him, at least from my point of view, it was funny. Was when he fucking threw Rey Mysterio into, the into truck. that into the truck. He looked, he threw him like he was a fucking lawn dart. Yep. <laughs> and now I was like, oh my god. I mean, I seriously thought Rey was fucking hurt on that one. Um, you know, we all have the stuff that he did. And the click did and everything like that, but it is it is what it is in a business. Um, how many people wouldn't have done the same thing and taken advantage of the situation that he did? But he was, you know, he was a pretty damn good de uh, big man. Yeah. Uh, one other quick thing about him. That night we met him, Mark, where we took a picture with him. He actually apologized to me for a match he had. I said, uh, my buddy and I, well, there were a group of us. I, Jack was there, too. I said, uh, we saw you in St. Mary's, Pennsylvania. And I forget, that, that picture would have been 2013. St. Mary's would have been 1994. So 17, 18 years earlier, right? No, Whatever. 94 to 13. Oh, yeah, 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 about, yeah. I said, we saw you against Bob Backlund. And he goes, oh, jeez, I'm sorry. That must have been a snoozer. And I started laughing. I mean, the guy knew, you know, he said, like, I... He knows the business. Yeah, and he's like, Bob Backlund versus Diesel is not anybody's idea of a great match. He's like, I'm sorry, man. That had to be a snoozer. It was three seconds. Well... The one was when he won the championship, but that one was like, that That did seem to go on for a long time. The actual action, yeah, it was probably about 20 seconds. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, so cheers to being here, Kevin Nash. Uh, raise your drink. Mark and I are drinking coffee this morning. Cheers to being here, Kevin Nash. All right, guys, let's do the NXT uh, in your house, because I'm in John's house, and Chad's in his own house. So I'm homeless right now, essentially. Yeah. So, But you could be in their house. I could be in their house tonight. Yeah, the NXT's house. NXT's yeah. house. All right, we'll start so off. Are they giving away a house? Do you think I'll that was... For real? Do you think that was a shoot? Do you, you think they really gave away a house back in the day? It know. actually, they did. Yeah? They actually did. It was a write-off, you know, of course, a write-off, uh, a donation. It was just like, um, oh, what are these? They they have a week to build a house, the show's. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I oh, know like mean. House Flipper or something like that, no. yeah. Yeah, whatever, whatever the heck it is. It was that type of deal, and it generally went, it wasn't no random draw. It generally went to a family what? in need. What? It wasn't random? What? Well, there were families in need that they had, and they put them into the lottery. I was wondering why yeah. I was never picked. Yeah. I found out that John Bon Jovi's house was really not up for <laughs> sale. Uh, no, like when they gave it away on MTV, I had just moved to PA from Sayreville, New Jersey, and Bon Jovi was just the shit in Sayreville, New Jersey. It's their hometown. Um, and I was a huge fan, huge fan of Bon Jovi. And they did that thing on MTV where you can win John Bon Jovi's house. I called that as soon as it hit a certain time, like 6 p.m. or something, which is prime pizzeria time. Uh, and I, I called that number 6,000 times for my mom's pizzeria until she's like, you little bastard, quit it. People can't call in. I just kept calling and calling and calling. Turns out the whole thing was bullshit. It wasn't even John's house. They didn't give anything away. At least you didn't get charged like 1-900 numbers. Yeah, I don't know what the what the deal was behind it. I don't know. I don't know if they got paid every time you, you call this number. I don't know. Hey, Hey, Mark, didn't you have like a $700 bill to that? Yeah. Okay. And, John, if if you said your mom said that to you? Yeah, I, I was calling from the pizzeria. Yeah. Okay, you, you got to, if if you're going to uh, call your mom out, you got to do uh, okay. the impression. All right. Well, it would have been partially in Italian, but. Uh... Okay. That was pretty good. That was really good. Nice. All right, NXT. Holy shit. NXT TakeOver uh, in your house. Uh, if they're going to give anything away, I wouldn't mind that set. I love the In Your House set. Yeah. You can I put agree. it right here. Yep. Uh, all right. First matchup, we're going to go with my cousin Mercedes Martinez taking on Zia Lee in a singles match. This is going to be really good. Um, Zia Lee, for all the push she's getting, had better win this match. Yep. Zia Lee. Yeah. I think we're all in agreement on that one. Next matchup for the vacant million dollar championship, Cameron Grimes against L.A. Knight. Uh, I want Grimes to win it, but it makes more sense for it to go on L.A. Knight. So uh, I'm taking L.A. Knight. You're taking L.A. Knight. I'm going to go with Cameron Grimes because... Ted DiBiase kind of praised him and said, hey, he showed me something that you need brains and brawn. This is a total setup. This is going to be L.A. night. Yeah. Ted, Ted being a nice guy and that belt going on a nice guy, a face, yeah. does not make sense. Yeah. Okay. Brunson Reed and MSK defend every title that they have, which is North American and Tag Team, against Legado del Fantasma. I would like to have seen the belts kind of split up a little bit so every team has something to lose. Legado has nothing to lose and everything to gain. And I think they gain everything. Chad? Didn't they put something up for up against the titles? Not that I know of. Yeah, I'm not aware of that. I thought that there was something... I've read somewhere that they... They were having to put something up against it. Uh, yeah, I agree with John. I think they're taking all the titles. That's all of us, then. All right. Uh, Raquel defends the NXT Women's Championship against Ember Moon. Raquel. I like Ember and what she's doing right now. Raquel. <coughs> yeah, we, we need we need the payoff between her and Dakota. 
Yeah. And that's going to happen. So, Raquel. Yep. All right. So, we only disagree on one so far, and you two have agreed on everything. Uh, this is going to separate us right here. Okay. Well, yeah. What do you mean? Oh, yeah. Well, there's five guys in the match. What are the chances of us all picking the same guy? We could. We could, but likely we won't. Karrion Cross, Kyle O'Reilly, Adam Cole, Gargano, and Pete Dunne will battle for the NXT Championship. Chad, you got to go first. Man. My heart says I want Adam Cole to do it, but I think Cross keeps the title. Uh, sorry about that, guys. That's all right. The, the The palace is open for business now. Things happen in this house. They You're do. getting your B and B bookings. Uh, I am going to go ahead and say Pete Dunne. He does not pin the champion, but uh, he wins the title. I'm saying Kyle and Adam take themselves out because there needs more of a payoff there. Look at that! Even uh, Mrs. English Professor gets to make it on the show today. Hopefully this person doesn't leave a message because that'll be played over everywhere. Yeah, it's probably a telemark. Yeah, they You're probably... Up. Your mom. Probably what on? You didn't call probably, me. <laughs> it's probably somebody in John's family uh, calling to bitch at him for his mom's and per- <laughs> mom impersonations. I would imagine. I would imagine. Uh, all right. Uh, Kyle and Adam take themselves out. I think Pete and Cross do battle a lot. Gargano is going to be the one that takes the pin, and Cross remains champion. So you guys say Cross. So Chad and I agreed on everything. You guys agreed on everything. Yep. So this is going to come down to the soup geist factor. <laughs> one fucking thing. Yeah. Yeah. That John could win with one. Thing if Cameron Grimes wins, doesn't he, matter what happens the rest of the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, unless Pete Dunn. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, all right, boys. Next Sunday, um, tonight. We'll, no, next. Oh Sunday. yeah, yeah. Tomorrow. Next Sunday, we'll next see Sunday, yeah. when the podcast is yeah, going to be because baseball, wrestling, baseball. Yeah. For me, so we'll have to. Interchange maybe an earlier time or a later time, but uh, be on the be on the lookout for us. Um, all right, here it comes Chad. You gave a shit after last week's show, but this Wednesday you'll be able to listen to Sam Houston on Can't Crush Your Spotlight. It's a good interview. Nice. Yeah, it really is. It's a good interview, and yeah, we've talked about it before. Just give it a listen. And one more thing, Chad. Are you going to read that Clifford book today? Is that what you're going to be uh, diving into that you were holding up for most of the show? Oh, yeah. Vinny told me that, you know, um, I, I got to learn how to read better. He said, I don't want you to be like bulk nasty. So he said, I'm going to start you out easy with a Clifford book, Dad. What's Clifford doing in that book? <laughs> Probably not the greatest one on this show to reveal, but Clifford has an itchy day. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, John. Just because you're trash, it doesn't mean you can't do great things. Called a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. Yeah.